Good to see you, man. Yeah, good to it's see you. It's been a while. I'm excited. Okay, so I know I've been hearing some of the buzz about your your new frameworks efforts. I'm yeah. really happy to hear about them. Yeah. But I'm also getting a little bit of deja vu because it's <laughs> been, you know, I, I was working in LFI back in 2022, right? Yeah. When we launched yeah. a frameworks campaign. What do you, what's different this time? The underlying approach have, have, have taken a, a big shift where I think we've moved to a point where I think a lot of the framework landscape is relying more on some form of on-demand rendering with, with caching at the CDN level, right? We were trying to make the framework layer work on Netlify without really addressing what would it take to make Netlify's platform best in class for dynamic caching, right? Like, let's work towards getting like these primitives solved so we can launch New framework runtimes that are very lightweight, very robust, and really just rely on on our core platform capabilities. We have a new Remix adapter, new Astro adapter, and a new Next adapter, which is for obvious reasons always been the most complex one, right? Like sure. Next for sure has also grown to be the most complex in terms of like yeah. every possible rendering mode you can imagine with different caching patterns and so on, right? Yeah. Like, but now we've been able to build a runtime that supports all of that based on a set of core primitives we kind of rolled out uh, in the last two quarters. So the the difference this time around is that you're, you're focused on primitives yes. instead. Yes. We've never had a framework of our own that was ours, right? That's, like, that's so right we always true. started by building like a platform mm -hmm. that we thought framework authors could use to build amazing things with, right? When the framework suddenly became so popular, we started chasing them a little instead of starting to get back in like how do we build the right thing you and know, let them go that's a really good point and i think that that articulates really well something that always felt like didn't sit right with me with that that original approach yeah. was it, yeah. it felt like it, it was breaking away from what made netlify so special yeah. and netlify has always been this this sort of like champion of the open web and the you know when we were started building for frameworks it felt like we were like yeah. here's netlify with a with a hat yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <And> the, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I'm really Nothing excited. Against to, tats, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's refreshing to hear because I, I love, you know, I've always loved that about Netlify that it's, it's approaching the web as a like neutral party. We, yeah. we want to see the web succeed. Yeah. It always seemed like yeah. it was Netlify's message. So, what are the new primitives that I guess made it possible to yeah. do yeah. these new these new runtimes this way? It was one of our engineers took a, a, a long turn on, on reinventing like the developer experience of Netlify functions to really say like, how do we make Netlify functions feel like you're just using modern web APIs? And our edge functions were actually like much better in that regard, like having a modern sort of like request response um, interface that, that, that feels really aligned with just like modern web APIs. So we took that to, to functions as well and made it, really made sure that the experience of anywhere we write compute code in Netlify it's like very close to just writing modern JavaScript for any kind of like web API reliant platform, right? Like, and that's kind of the underlying, like, hey, if we want the adapters to be built on top of this, let's start by making this piece really great to build with, right. even if you're not using a framework at all. I love that this shift is happening. I use the MBN yeah. docs yeah, more than precisely. I use a lot of the precisely, Netlify docs. Precisely, and yeah. I really like that, right? Like, and we took that step already with edge functions. And then I'll say, personally, I've had a lot of inspiration from what the Remix team is doing, right? Like, I think they are doing a great job of also really imagining how can we stay as close as possible to the web platform and make everything you learn for Remix sort of apply right. to anything you build with modern web standards, right? Like, and we really took that same approach with Netlify. And if you know those docs, you can come and you can build with Netlify, right? Like, and yeah. use our our primitives. So that was like one of the core like core pieces of of yeah. of, of improvements. And then the next like really big set of improvements. What would it take to go from being best in class at static caching and then being best in class at at dynamic caching, right? Like where where, where you have to start relying on developers telling our CDN, like, what do I want you to do? Right, right. right. Um, without getting too many foot guns. With great power comes great responsibility and caching hitters is a very great power, right? Like if you set a cache control hitter that's in the far future for the wrong object, well, yeah. tough luck. You now have no possible way of AI telling your user's browser they should get a new version, right? Right, like, I've, I've caused a lot of pain for myself over the years with 
I, 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 I think all of us have some scars from 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 that, right? Like. So we so so we looked at a new standard in the CD and cash control. So if you just set a cash control header, anything between your origin, your serverless function or whatever, and the browser, including the browser, will pick up that cash control and start doing things based on it, right? Like right. but you can preface it with CDN dash cash control. And now only CDNs in between will pick it up and the end users browser will, will never re receive that, right? Like, so that already gives you a lot more control because like now you can rely on our purging mechanisms and you know you have a way to purge stuff. And then you can go even further and you can say Netlify dash CDN cache control. And now even if you're in a situation with multi-layered CDNs or whatever, only Netlify will pick up those cache control headers and you can really tell our edge this is what I want you to do, right? Like, so that's a first Im important element of just being able to, to, to namespace. The next element was adding support for the stale while we validate cache control in instruction, right? Like, and stale while we validate kind of like what it says. It means like if a request comes in and we already have a response, but it's stale, it, you, you basically tell our edge, just give that response back, right. but start a background, re like start a new request in the background. And when that comes back, replace the element you have in the cache, right? Like, and we tied it into our normal purging mechanism. So you always have the guarantee that when you actually do a new deploy, everything has been validated, right? Like, because it's always been important for us to keep that guarantee. And if you don't do that, it's very easy to get into situations where you don't really realize that you've created really sudden breakages. It's it's really important for us that the default behavior is that like purge when there's a new deploy. Then the next thing we introduced was this um, idea of cache tags. Now you can apply a header called cache tags and say, give this a tag called uh, contentful, for example. Every time there's a content change in contentful, I wanna send a purge notification to Netlify. You can now go from purging every deploy to purging on demand. Suddenly you just have a few primitives and you can easily construct like ISR patterns with on demand revalidation and so on, just from these primitives without even, you don't even need a framework, right? Like you can just use the serverless function and, and these headers. We introduced the Netlify cache ID header that you can set to say like, imagine that the default behavior is kind of that we set a cache tags that's your site ID, right? Like, right. and every time there's a deploy, we purge that tag, right? Like with this right. header, you can say, I don't want the site ID to be the main cache tag here. I want to give it my own, right? Like so effectively I could like do a version of some kind of yes. long lived resource. Yes. And I would yes. only change the, the version when I change when it. When you change it, right? Like, oh, and yeah. at the same time, having you required to choose this cache ID, make sure that you can never accidentally like, Right. put something in our cache that you have no way of purging. Really trying to think through how can we give you the full power of control, but without foot guns. The last primitive we, we introduced there, it's actually a pretty big innovation, like uh, no, no, no other platform has it, and it's called the Netlify Vary Hitter. And it okay. kind of, I don't know if you know how much like uh, how very hitters themselves work, right? Like- let's, let's assume I don't. Let's assume you don't, right? Like, and I would say most people don't. You, some people think they do, but they often don't. <laughs> so the really simple thing is like when your browser requests an object from us, it will send an uh, accept encoding header. So I, I think I, I do know how this works because I've run into it before where yeah. I serve an image. Yeah. But when you're using something like Cloudinary or whatever, yep. you can say like, hey, send the right format for this browser. Precisely, right? But like, the, the URL is always the same. It's always the same. Right? And so like, if I if it cached the first instance, then exactly. it, it does like a, an AVIF. And yep. somebody who's on a browser that can't support AVIF Suddenly calls that dot JPEG and gets a broken image. Precisely. Oh, Precisely. Okay, I right? get it. Like, I get it. So that's the way you have a way to to say in the response, say vary by this header, right? right. Like you can okay. say vary by the accept header and so on. But it applies to the whole value of that header. There's no granularity, right? Like imagine I have my website. You might have tested everything. It caches super well. You have a 90% cache hit rate. Everything is good. 
and now your CMO goes spend a, like a huge campaign on social media, and suddenly every visitor coming in from that campaign have their own cash key. Right. You get a cash key. You get a cash key, right? Like it's <laughs> like everybody has their own. What's going to happen to your cash hit rate? All the requests are going to go to your origin, and suddenly you have the good old like my database gets angry and and now it's broken. So how can you solve that? Well. We introduced this Netlify Vary header. We can go in and say Netlify Vary cookie A-B test and say, take the A-B test cookie into account, but not the analytics cookie or all the other stuff that, that that's in there. This is huge because this is the kind of stuff that I like, I always wanted to do this and I yeah. could not be bothered to figure out how. So yeah. I just, I just kind of wrote it off as like, eh, maybe somebody will yeah. solve that someday. So I'm yeah. very excited that you did it. We did it, we did it, great. Like, And then there's two more primitives like we, 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 we build out. One of those is, uh, is Netlify Blobs. So Netlify Blobs is essentially S3, right? Like, okay. like essentially, right? Like it, it's just even simpler in the sense that when you use it with Netlify, you, you don't have to think about creating buckets or setting, setting access tokens or whatever, and yeah. figuring out IAM roles and all of that. You, you just like pull in our library and from any function, you can like create a context essentially, right? Like you use a get store and then you can say, what store do I want? And then you can put stuff into the blob and, and get out of it. It doesn't really care about what you put into it and get out of anything it. Anything into it, yeah. This comes in really important if you want to add persistence to ISR. You can use it to implement these patterns regardless of what framework you're using. And obviously in our next adapter, it's it's used to handle all of the persistent caching. And then you said there was one more. And that's one more. Um, one more thing. One now. One now. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one is what we call the image CDN. And for use cases like building a source set, like I love these yes. image CDN yeah, yeah, tours. Yeah. Before I had image CDNs, I would never do yeah, that. Yeah, I just never yeah. had the patience. I, I wasn't going to do the yeah, work. Yeah. And then, of course, in our framework adapters, if again, if you're using Astro or Next with Netlify, they have their own image yes. tags. We will just use the image CDN transparently, so you don't even so need to works. know it exists, right? Like, yeah. but again, it was really important for us to actually have the primitive, right? Like, yeah. and make the primitive available, whether you're using a framework or not. Or this is exciting because, like, everything you said. At no point was it like, oh yeah, and then for Next we built this, and for Astro we built Precisely. this, and for Remix we Precisely. built this. It, these are just things that anybody can yeah. use. And you, you said a few times that like, I don't need to be on a framework to get yeah. advantages yeah. out of this. As you look at this space, how are you going to keep this open? We just got to stay true to, to the roots we kind of come back to, right? Like and say, what is it we can extract from all the learnings of the different things, the frameworks, the different frameworks are, are, are doing? and big into our platform as first class primitives rather than like purely chasing after do, do, does this specific framework work with us really right. like always take that one step back and say okay if it's hard to get it work right now it must be because we're missing some kind of underlying thing that 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 should make it easy to get it to work right like so let's build that thing let's make it available to any framework and 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 let's push in that direction because i also think that we'll keep seeing a lot of evolution in in that framework space and i think right. for me it's really important that we think about okay what are the core building blocks what are the core primitives so we don't get boxed into like one one specific way of doing things so this all sounds amazing but we're also really in the in the technical weeds here i feel like a lot of the pain that i've felt as yeah. a developer isn't actually the the code yeah. it's the workflow yeah. Yeah. but i feel like you know 10, 15 years ago, my pain yeah. was that everything was like crammed into a box that it didn't necessarily fit into. Yeah. And we were just trying to make one tool do everything. Yeah. But now I kind of feel like we've come to the other side yeah. and we yeah. may be overcorrected yeah. a bit. <laughs> and now I feel like I have an independent service for literally everything that I yeah. do. Yeah. Are these primitives here going to make that better? So I think all of these primitives are going to make life easier for developers. We've really thought about like, how can we give developers all of that choice and all of that freedom while still giving the business users or the marketeers or the merchants their ability to interact with a website and make changes on their own and so on. Because often those two pieces have 
been at odds. So at the platform level, we've really tried to solve, like, how can we make developers and marketeers work really effectively together? It's funny, because, like the, a joke that I've made a bunch is that you can tell who the leader of the company is, like whether they come from a marketing and sales background or from a development background based by who's miserable on the team, because <laughs> you've either got That's like true. a fully dev driven company yeah. where the devs yeah. have control of everything and everybody else is like, please developer, help me do anything. Yeah. Or you've yeah. got like the marketers run everything and they're super happy because they've got full controls and the developers like, I hate this system. I hate working on this. Everything sucks. Yeah. These tools are starting. They're feeling like they're growing together in a way that's yeah. actually yeah. manageable. Yeah. How do you think, like, what are the things that the company should be thinking about or that that developers and marketers should be thinking about as we move into this highly distributed yeah. like service yeah. for everything world how do we keep yeah. it with with both teams being happy and that's kind of our vision for this whole platform right like let's make sure that we go from helping maybe just teams of developers ship faster and help whole teams ship faster together across developers and non-developers it, it it's always felt to me that Netlify is sort of playing a, a long game, um, which is always a risky game. But in in to my heart, it's it feels good. You know, I think that that betting on the web, betting on the fact that giving people choices is the the best long term play, as opposed to trying to yeah. slowly lock people into something. I think it it feels. I don't know. That's that's the internet I fell in love with, right? And and so. Sticking up for that feels good. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're trying to be really good citizens in the, in the open web community around us. All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for taking some time. It's always good to catch up with you for a coffee. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's do, do this once in a while. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> let's do it again soon.